I'm Anna Thomas, a data and applied scientist on the Azure SQL team. Uh, in this episode, I'm joined by our CTO of Azure, uh, Mark Rasinovich, who's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, what we've been doing with SQL and what's coming in the future. So thanks, Mark, for joining us. Thanks, Anna, for having me. Yeah, so on the last episode we talked, we kind of talked more high level about Azure and data and where we're going. But, you know, I'm a SQL person, so mm -hmm. I was wondering if it'd be okay if I asked some SQL questions. Sure. So the first one is Azure SQL Database Edge. Now, I saw you present at Build back in May about SQL mm -hmm. Database Edge, and I was just wondering if you could share, you know, what your involvement has been and kind of any insights you have into what we're doing there. Sure. Well, I think uh, Microsoft's worldview, as defined by Satya, is Intelligent Cloud, Intelligent Edge. And the realization of that worldview is actually built on the foundation, which is Azure, including Azure Data Services. The, goal is to be as consistent as possible from cloud to edge while delivering capabilities that are specific to each the requirements in each one of those points on the spectrum. And so if you take a look at data, it means delivering the same APIs both in the cloud and the edge. So you can have an application that can run in either place without major changes. Now in the case of Azure SQL Database Edge, there are some specific requirements that are related to edge that it, it fulfills, one of them being you need to take it and deploy it on an infrastructure that's operated by somebody that's operating the edge. It's not going to be a managed cloud service. Right. And so it's going to be a container orchestrator like Kubernetes, which means that we need to containerize it. It also means that unlike the cloud, which is where we run our cloud services on whatever hardware we want to, and it's kind of not visible directly to the customers in mm -hmm. most cases, in the case of the edge, they might want to be using x86 or ARM, for example. So we need to support both of those. The uh, next one is on the edge, you're gonna be having a bunch of data processing inside of one container with an integrated capability, unlike the cloud where you can decompose things into different services. So for example, streaming, right. we want to have built right in. We also want the ability to replicate data out to the cloud as well, to be that for that to be built right in. So all of these, go into the, that realization of that point on the spectrum of Intelligent Cloud, Intelligent Edge with Azure SQL Database Edge. Yeah, yeah, definitely a really cool thing that we're doing and I'm excited to see what new applications it, it enables. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the Intelligent Cloud, Intelligent Edge and at Inspire, I heard Satya say that you know, Bill Gates was really impressed by hyperscale and uh, SQL hyperscale is one of the things we've been doing in the cloud. And I know this is something that came out of Microsoft Research. It's been mm -hmm. something we've worked on for several years. Um, what's, what's your take on hyperscale? Uh, what has been your involvement yeah. and where do you think it's going and what does it open? Well, if Bill Gates says it's cool, it's obviously <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, I think the, the big uh, kind of innovation with Azure SQL Hyperscale is the fact that it took this monolithic database architecture and decomposed it. Mm -hmm. And once you decompose it, you can get to scales that you couldn't get with uh, the monolithic architecture. So taking the log store, pulling that out, taking the compute servers, pulling that out, allowing you to scale those out and to read from the replicas directly, uh, taking the, uh, the page servers, pulling those out and allowing them also to scale and then taking all the data, the persistent data, and putting that on a low cost backend Azure storage, which is infinitely scalable. And uh, the combination of all that means that you can get to 100 terabyte size databases right. uh, with incredible amounts of throughput. Because, and you define how much throughput you want on the read side with the read replicas. So really kind of a you know, unique way or new way to look at database architecture and deliver this kind of cool capabilities. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, speaking of new ways and new capabilities, you know, is there anything you're really excited about or new investments that we're making that you can kind of share publicly? Uh, well, going to that intelligent cloud, intelligent edge, I think, and I didn't mention, by the way, that built uh, R is built right into Azure SQL Database Edge, so right. you can do ML right there mm -hmm. on the edge. But uh, that intelligence is one part that we're delivering. And I think a cool part of intelligence is not just giving customers the ability to run ML right on the data, mm -hmm. but having ML make a better service. And so if you take a look at the way that we're doing things with Azure SQL in the cloud, we're using machine learning to proactively determine if there's gonna be problems with the database to help cu customers with their indexing uh, and just to optimize the service overall. But uh, one of the 
trends that we're going to be seeing is effectively customized instances of cloud services, ones that are customized and optimized for a customer's workload or workloads in a way that makes them uh, perform better. So if you take a look at SQL, if you mm -hmm. take a look and you're looking at the queries that a workload is performing, rather than tell the database administrator, go put an index on this, right. organize, uh, which only gets you so far, it is automatically determining which indices to put in place and also laying out the indices in storage to make them efficient access for the workload patterns. And so uh, I think that that's going to be a trend across not just SQL and databases, but just all cloud services are going using to be, the power of yeah, machine ML for, for, uh, for instance specific optimization. Wow, that will be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, well, thanks so much for joining us again, Mark. Sure. I really thanks enjoyed it. I, I hope everyone else enjoyed the, viewing this video. Um, if you did, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and uh, tune in to Data Exposed next time. Thanks.